What's going on, Champagne Gang? Fizz fam, confidants. <laughs> Welcome to the Champagne City. If this is your first time here, hi, I'm the Empress, and you are joining me for grown discussions and bubbly banter. Over here, we give classy with a twist, huh? A little clink with chaos with a side of charm. So if you're ready to sip, savor, and spill, baby, grab your favorite glass of bubbly. Kick your feet up on one of those chase lounges. Say hi to a few people in the chat. And let's get ready to get into it. But y'all, we virtual. <laughs> this is a virtual experience on today because the empress is a little under the weather. Uh-huh. Somebody bugged or ran up on me and is holding me hostage. <laughs> so we'll be back live as soon as I get over whatever this is that started out as allergies but has progressed into foolishness. But y'all listen, I ran across this story time on TikTok and baby, it has me bamboozled, perplexed, outdone at the level of toxicity our young people are dealing with and putting up with and going back to. It does, but it also makes me question what is going on in the lives of our youth that they feel like toxic is the way to go? This is what they want. They don't want the young men who are clean cut and dapper, working a regular nine to five. Nah, they want a thug. They want a ninja. They want the street. So we're going to get into this story because unfortunately, these kind of relationships generally never end on a good note. So we're going to listen to this one. I want you to drop in the comments and let me know what you think about it. I will be in the chat with you so that we can have a discussion. And maybe when I'm feeling better, we'll jump in a champagne group chat and have a discussion about it live. All right. So this one doesn't really have a title, but she's going to get into the toxicity she had to deal with in this relationship with this guy that she ended up pregnant by. Now, can y'all do something for me? You know, other than hitting that like and subscribe button, joining the champagne gang, you know, becoming one of us. Other than that, <laughs> take those glasses and raise them high in the air because it's time for our positivity and affirmation. Are you ready? Listen, it's time to stop playing small and start recognizing your true value. You bring way too much to the table to be settling for anything less than you deserve. So let's get one thing straight. I need you to know your worth and then add tax. You've worked too hard. You've grown. You've overcome. So don't let anyone make you feel like you're asking for too much when you're simply claiming what you've earned. Whether it's in your career, your relationship, or just how you move through life. Remember, you are a limited edition, not some bargain bin deal. You set the price and anyone who doesn't see your value <laughs> can keep it moving. It's time to level up and collect what's yours plus interest. Repeat after me. I 
am priceless, unstoppable, and fully aware of my worth. I don't settle, I elevate because I was made for greatness and I claim every ounce of it. Here's to you, confidant, for you are worth it. Let's toast. Let's go. No baby, no daddy. He not even really my baby daddy, so we gonna call him, uh, we gonna call him Ice, cause I feel like that's what he was doing at the time. That's what he was selling. He was selling drugs and doing fraud. He dead and that, so he can't go to jail. And I'm gonna be real respectful because I have a man now and I love him so much to death. Oh, I'm so nosy, y'all. They done told these people car. Look at him scrapping it up at the store. You done stole the people car from out their parking lot at the apartments. So, boom. Y'all remember I was telling y'all about um the uh, the boy best friend that he had that I couldn't stand that he had died. Well, got kicked. well, he ain't here with us either, but, you know, he lied on me. I don't like lies, and ever since he lied, I couldn't stand that bout. So, boom. Me and um, Ice end up meeting through him. So, one day we was all cooling. I had pulled up over there to smoke with him, my uh, ex best friend. So, we all cooling, chilling or whatever. Then I should have knew then because that night he tried to eat my, he tried to eat my, my pocketbook. Like, I don't know you at all. Why are you trying to do that to me? But then I should have knew after a month, he was telling me that he loved me. Like, you don't know me to love, I could be a serial killer. You don't you love me? You love a serial killer? But yeah, let me cut to the chase. So we all end up meeting Lincoln, drinking, smoking and shit. Um... The first time he beat, well, the first time he didn't actually beat me up, but I could, he was giving beat the bitch vibes because one of my homegirl, my homegirl and her boyfriend, they was in the area. She had called me. She was like, we in the area. We just got, you know, we finna get some food. You want some? I'm like, hell yeah, bring me some. So that's just how me and my friends are. Like if I'm around my friend, I know my, I'm by my friend. How's that girl? I'm gonna grab some food. You ain't, I'll bring it to you type shit. So he get mad. He get mad because they brought me the food. He gonna tell me some, um... I had asked him, I'm like, you want something? He like, I don't want no food. That nothing nigga bought. I'm like, the nigga didn't even buy you no food. I said, they bought me the food. And I said, like, why is you mad like this? I'm like, I always be going on. Like, I'm gen gen genuinely was confused. So he gets so mad, y'all. He started going off, calling me, bitch, did, bitch, did, woo, 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 did that. Like, going in on me. And I'm confused. And I'm like, what did I do for real, y'all? So he, he had concrete walls in his house. So he ended up punching the floor and shit. I'm like, this nigga punching the floor. He might punch me. But he didn't punch me. By you, I was 18, young and dumb. So he ended up taking me home, dropping me off. Then like an hour later, he ended up telling me some, come back, I'm sorry, what's with this, that, and third. And I'm like, no. <laughs> but he sounded real genuine. He sounded real genuine, like he really was sorry that he did that. And went off on me and, and called me out of my name and had through a big temper tantrum. So boom, we ended up going out to eat. Um, What did he punch me for the first time? Mind you, I don't even know what I got beat up for the first time. I can't even remember. But I just remember him punching me. Like, he punched me so hard. All I saw was stars. Boom, I fall to the ground. He kicking me in my stomach. Kicking me in my face. But he not doing it real hard. But it's still the fact that you doing it. Like, why are you doing it? So, boom. I get up. He immediately started crying. Talk about he finna kill himself. He sorry. He don't know what got into him. Woo, woo, this, that, and the third. And I'm my dumb ass starting to feel dumb. I'm like, why are you crying? <laughs> Just slow. <laughs> he goes, I don't know what's going on. This and third. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. It's okay, baby. It wasn't okay. <laughs> so that next day, we end up going out to eat, right, y'all? So we come back from out to eat. I'm in there taking a nap. I got the itis. So one of my homeboys had called me, but I missed the call. So I saw him miss call on my phone. So he ended up picking the phone up. He ended up he ended up picking the phone up and seeing because at that time I didn't care about no nigga going through my phone. I wasn't no I I yeah, I won't go lie to you like if you saw you just saw. But he was like, who is this? I'm like, I don't know. So I ended up calling the number back, but I didn't know that there was his number. You know how niggas do niggas switch niggas was, a nigga switch a phone number like they switch they draws, which they barely do. But I mean so she's draws every day. But I'm just saying. So I called it back, boom, it's my homeboy. Now, I see the look on Ice's face, and I see the heat mad, like he heated that this nigga called my phone. I'm like, he like, who is this? So I panic. I'm like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> he might got the wrong number. It's not funny. Don't lie, kids. So boom, he immediately get mad. So my homeboy on the phone, I guess he end up, you know, peeping the vibe. So he like, oh, my bad. I got the wrong number. So I'm like, I'm glad this bitch ain't done. 
So he immediately get mad, y'all. Boom. Slap shit out my ass. Pop. I'm like, damn. Why I do that stupid shit? So I'm like, why the fuck you do that? Boom. I ain't even healed good from the first time. He just slapped shit out of me again. But my y'all, he was hitting me hard. But like, it wasn't, you know, too hard. But I don't know. Hitting somebody just... Domestic violence is not cool. Period. Like I, I know I play a lot, but they like it ain't it ain't cool. No matter how hard they hit you, they hit you in general. If they flinch at you, if they yell at you, any abuse leave. I know that. that. So boom, I'm hysterically crying. I'm like, I thought you were sorry. You were gonna do it tomorrow. Then that's when it clicked in my head. Right then, when I'm laying on the floor crying, screaming, yelling, I'm like, I am in a abusive relationship, and what have I got myself into? Because at this point, this man was like batshit crazy. Like I just skipped a few months. I went straight to the abuse because the first few months, I mean, it wasn't really bad, but like I, I just got nipped it right in the butt. So he pulled the same game card. He gonna change. He's sorry. He crying again. He crying. I'm crying. Everybody crying. I'm like, oh my god, it's too much. Cry myself to sleep. Few days later, you know, after I kind of thought about it and like the vibe was just too weird and I couldn't shake back from it. Like I left. I left for like a few weeks. I ain't gonna lie, but he ended up creeping his way back in my life through my ex best friend. We gonna skip to I think. I think we gonna skip to the end of the year around like October, November around. His birthday was coming up and I had wanted to surprise him. So I asked one of my homeboys for some money. I like, let me borrow some money, you know, I'm gonna pay you back or whatever. Mind you, at the time, I'm 18. I was a dancer, so all I had to do was go to work like that night. In Mississippi, you could become a dancer at 18, 18 legal age. I don't know why, but that, that should not even be a thing, but it is. I was trying to surprise him, so he would be FaceTime me. I won't answer FaceTime, but I answer the regular call, the regular calls. He was asking me where I was at. I'm like, I'm with my sister, you know, we out and about or whatever. So, I guess he was feeling fishy. Why the fuck did he pop up in my apartment and my sister was in my apartment? <laughs> I was really with my sister. I was with my little sister, but he thought I was talking about my big sister, but still. So, he asked my sister where I'm at, and she told him, like, she don't know where I'm at. Like, she didn't know, like, why would you tell him that? But I probably should have told her what I was doing. So, he get mad, y'all. Blow up my phone, don't text me, call him, woo We pulling up. At the time, we as he going off on me, texting me and calling me, blowing me up, we pulling up. So I'm like, damn, drop me off at my uh, homegirl house because she stayed in the same apartment complex. I'm like, drop me off at her house. I ain't want him to see the shit or whatever. Broke up with me, didn't want to be with me. I was like, all right, cool, over there. And you with my ass twice, cool. So I ain't no telling my ex-best friend. I was like, you know, I got him to stuff for his birthday or whatever. Like, you know, take him, take it to him, you know, let him know. Like, I just end up telling him, like, for real, like, this what it was. And he still didn't want to be with me. So I'm like, best, 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 just take him the shit for me. We end up getting back cool and stuff after that, but I feel like he did something because he ended up going to Louisiana for his birthday. One of his baby mama stayed down there, so that's probably what they what he did. Cause he came back all happy, wanted to be back together and stuff. You was mad when you left, but when you come back, you wanted to be back together. Yeah, you did something, but we went together, so I didn't even care for real. At this point, like the abuse was at an all time high. He did not trust me. He'll forever question me again, and again, and again, and back to back to back about the same day. And I'm just like instead of telling him the same story, like this is what it was, like and I'm about to lie to you, like what's wrong with you? Boom, he'll get mad because maybe I left like a little detail out there, like oh we went to this stuff. Oh you didn't tell me you went to this stuff. Why you beat me up because I didn't tell you that we went to this stuff? Like so, boom. Let's fast forward to my birthday. Cause my birthday in January. I was turning 19, and for my birthday, I told him that, like, I wanted these shoes, these sandals, and this purse. So, he was like, he gonna pay for it. Why he give me $80? Which, you can't get a purse and some shoes for $80, but the stuff I wanted didn't cost $80 combined. Maybe, like, two, three hundred dollars but, like, it didn't matter to me, because I just, like, threw a bag on you for your birthday. He come over there, talk about he had went over the bridge and bought me a daiquiri. He had went over the bridge to New Orleans and bought me a, a daiquiri jug or whatever. I was like, oh, that's sweet. And he was tired and exhausted and stuff. And I could tell, like, his vibe was just still kind of off. He had asked me, like, where the stuff was that I got. And I'm like, I ain't get it yet because I didn't have no car to get it. What am I going to take me to get it? Boom, he get mad, start beating me up. <laughs> Damn, the night of my birthday. So I ended up locking myself in the closet for, like, a few hours. He's still in there going off, throwing shit, breaking shit. So, I ain't want to go to sleep in the closet. I ended up getting up and getting out the closet and getting in the bed. He was in the bed. I was in the bed. We were finna get ready to go to sleep. But I could not go to sleep because it just felt so weird sleeping beside this man. And I'm like, oh my God, no, I can't do this. On my birthday, too. Like, you do, do you not care? And he had got to the point where he was saying that he was going to laugh me. And I'm like, why? Like, I still got the money. Do you want your money back? Was that all you had? Uh, the video coming to the end. Damn, this motherfucker nine minutes. Um, long story short, it's October. It's domestic violence month. 
Um, if you're going through something like that, leave. If you got kids, leave because of your kids. Don't stay. That nigga don't care about you. He don't love you, and it's not a joke. Don't lose your life over a nigga that don't care about you. You got other people that care about you, and he is not one. I know it's hard. Believe me, I know. So you you can leave. It's possible. Don't don't be don't be fearful. Be fearless. Part two, and I want to thank y'all for all the hugs, the kisses, and the love. It's been going on two and a half, almost three years since my baby been dead. I probably should be traumatized from these series of events, but I'm not. I might be. I don't know. We wake up there next morning. We go outside to his car. Why his tire flat? Oh, uh, God, I'm like, ugly. It was funny, but I was also mad because then we had to stay there a little longer. At this time, he had to convince me to move out my apartment and stop dancing. Did I do that? Yes, because I'm a dumbass. I ended up moving some of my stuff to my cousin's house, and I had, like, a few baskets of clothes at his house. Did I stop dancing? Yes, because I'm a dumbass. Why did I, why was I not cautious about this move? I don't know. So at this time, we end up um, going out of town to Miami. It was, supposed to, it was me and him and his homeboy. His homeboy was supposed to bring his girlfriend, but he didn't bring a girlfriend because they got no get a tool. He want to go down there. They want to go down there and do fraud so bad. They couldn't even get us no room. So I'm like, is we even going to go back home? So boom, on the way down there though, like he ended up going through my message request. It was this popper, popular rapper in my city that everybody was listening to. I didn't know the rapper, but I heard his music because everybody was listening to him. But I mean, I didn't give a fuck. You from Jackson, nigga. I don't give a fuck about you. He sent me my message request. He's like, why is this nigga in your message request? Bitch, I don't know. Ask him. Fuck. So boom, he ended up letting it go. Did he let it go for real? No, the bitch brought it back up. So on the ride back from Miami, from Miami to Jackson, that's like 13, 14 hours. Mind you, we in the car the whole time arguing. So he ended up just finally opening the messages. He told me, why this nigga sending you his number? Tell him he wants you. Bitch, you need to ask him. You asking the wrong motherfucker. Why'd you get mad at me? You need to get mad at that nigga. So boom, he get mad. He in the passenger seat, his homeboy driving. I'm on the back seat because I'll back there sleep. Why the fuck did he throw my phone in my head? I had a big ass knot on top of my head. We end up making it to Jackson, y'all. We make it to Jackson. We just end up, I'm like, I don't even want to do this no more. So, um, at this time, I hadn't got one of my, my mama other car. She gave it to me. We broke up. I got all my stuff. He had my phone. I didn't know what the fuck he was doing on my phone, but he had shared my location with him and deleted the thread. You know, with the old update, you can, you can get the old messages back. So, you didn't know, like, if the message was deleted, it was just deleted. I pulled up to my god sister's house to go see my niece. Why the fuck? It's like 1 o'clock in the morning. Just got back from Miami. Just broke up. He pop up at the door, knocking on the door. I'm like, where the fuck? How the fuck did you know I'm here? He giggling, cackling, because I got your location. Then he get mad. Who house is it? Bitch, it's my people house. Leave me the fuck alone. He turns him go home. Like, yeah, this is what I did. I took my black ass home. I ain't had time. So at this time, I had wanted to, you know, do lashes. I was doing lashes. I had did this girl lashes one time. I had let my little sister keep my car and drop me off while her, they were her, her, her car was getting worked on. So my, my gas hand wasn't working in the car at the time. So the car had ran out of gas. I didn't know the car had ran out of gas. I didn't know what was wrong with the car. She just ended up coming to get me in her car and taking me to the car. Me, her, and her brother tried to fix it, but we couldn't because we couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. We thought it was the battery report. She wanted the battery report. So I ended up just calling him and telling him because he was the only nigga that I could just think of right now. I'm like, my car messed up. Woo -woo, can you hear me? So he was like, you what happened? Woo -woo, that he trying to find out what happened, bitch. You need to find out what's going on in my car. Shouldn't have called that bitch. So he like, I right, just meet me. I had told him some dumb ass lie. I can't remember what the lie was because it was so fucking motherfucking dumb. But what I lie for? I don't know. Scary. He like, I right, just meet me at the store. You're going to get to call me. We're going to go to your car and we're going to have it told. We pull up to the store. I did not see this nigga car. I didn't even see him. He told me I'm at the store. I'm at the store. I'm like, I'm at the store. I don't see you. The store ain't that damn big. Why he come from around the fucking corner like Michael Myers? Open her car though, trying to pull me out. I had just got my hurt. Now he pulling me out. I know the ball was secure because the ball didn't even come off. My motherfucking braids came out with the ball. I mean, my motherfucking shit was bald by the time he ended up pulling me out the car. He was pulling me out the car, punching me, pulling me out the car, punching me, pulling me out the car, punching me, pulling me out the car, punching me. I'm just all knotted up. Her messed up, just all fucked up. I mean, my jawbone right here, if you feel this, it's a hump right here. It's not supposed to be heat. This all this was like literally this wall. I had a big ass knot up here, hair missing. Like my little sister still got the pictures. I gotta get the pictures. She can still got the pictures on her phone. So boom, that same night we end up taking him on a high speed chase. I told her to run his ass over while he's sitting there whooping my ass. She told me she's scared, girl. Run this bitch. I turn him into a speed bump. Fuck him. I end up getting the driver's seat switch, and he end up finding us and chasing us down the interstate. I end up going to his mama house trying to tell on him. His mama didn't even open the door. She didn't give a fuck about me. So, boom, I ended up getting dropped off that night, going home. Man, you, I stayed with my cousin, so I didn't want my cousin to see it because she was going to go ballistic. I ended up lying to her, telling her another boy had did it. My dumb ass. what I do that for? So, boom, I'm walking around with face messed up, everything just all discombobulated. 
I was going through so much. I had really had tried to, you know, myself. I had ended up trying to overdose, taking like five, six different type of pills. So I'm scary. I'm thinking that I want to die because my heart broke, but I didn't want to die that bad. So I ended up going to the hospital because I was like, I need y'all to pump my stomach. I think I overdosed. They're like, what you mean you think we overdosed? What, what you mean you think you overdosed? So I'm like, damn, I fucked up when I said this. So they're like, just come in this room. I, they put me in a room with a fucking steel door. 72 hour watch. I ended up telling him and telling my sister, they coming to see me. He laughing at me, telling me, oh, I look at this crazy bitch. Oh, you wouldn't kill yourself up. Bitch, I could whoop your ass right now. Police was outside the door. I couldn't. So I ended up getting out because I ended up lying and telling the doctors it wasn't no overdose like that. I just took a lot of pain medicine because I was in pain. I feel like I had took too much. So boom, they let me go right at the 72 hour mark. I don't know how I ended back up at his house, but I did. All busted and disgusted. It hadn't healed a little bit at that point, but you could still tell like it was a black eye. It wasn't even black. That bitch was purple. Purple, yellow, orange. It, had, it, had a, it, was, a, it was a whole color palette. So I had to say to my mind, I'm like, you know, I really just don't even want to be with this man no more. But I couldn't see out my eye. Like, this eye, I couldn't see. Like, I was seeing splashes of black stuff, stars. Like, I couldn't see. This eye was good, but I could not see out this one. He, here he go crying again. So I, like, I don't want to go to jail. Like, bitch, you shouldn't have broke my face. His dumb ass. I'm not even going to call the police. But, bitch, I should feel like I'm calling the police to piss you off. So, I end up, um, I end up just leaving him for real and get. I ended up leaving him for real, getting back on my feet, working at Walmart. I hadn't got my car to the side of the road. My mom and my daddy had to go get it. Um, how did they know? I was wearing a lot of makeup one at the time, so they didn't even see my eye. So, um, working at Walmart, my car ended up messing up one day. So, I had to start getting rentals. And when I did that, oh, he got so heated. I was over my homegirl Tyler house one night, me and, um... One of my exes, he texted me and asked what I was doing. I was telling him, like, I'm over here chilling with said ex. He going to talk to, oh, for real, oh, all right. So, I ended up telling the boy, like, come on, I'm going to just drop you off. Because I don't know what I just told this man and shit. I just feel like he finna come. He going to tell us what you mean. I said, just come on so I can drop you off, bitch. I pulled back up. Why the fuck is he outside the her apartment? He going to tell us, what a nigga? I said, I dropped him. I told him, oh, you going to do I was coming? I said, yes, because you just ignorant. I'm like, I don't got time for you to be fighting me and fighting him. Bitch, you want to tell to be a Muhammad Ali? So he laughing the shit off, thinking the shit funny. It's not funny to me. I'm actually pissed off, but I'm laughing because I'm kind of high, and I think I was drinking at night. I don't remember. It was so goddamn long ago. So a few days later, still not talking to him for real. Like he'll text me, and I probably like respond, or he'll double text me. I wouldn't respond. It just depends on the mood that I was in, if I, if I feel like playing or not. So a few days later. I was over there at Taja's house again, and I was finna walk outside to the car. Me and my little cousin, we were finna get ready to go. I'm walking outside to the rental car. Why the fuck I see him in the, in the parking lot? I'm like, what the fuck? So I see him, and I boom, I did a swift move. Like, what, like the football players be doing. I'm running through the buildings. He's chasing me. He like, what you running for? I'm like, why the fuck is you chasing me? He like, cause you running. I'm like, bitch, why had you out here? My dumb ass. He told me he was bringing me my stuff. Bitch, you couldn't be in. Cause I ain't leaving nothing that valuable at your house for you to have to pull up, come all the way out south to bring it to me. You could have, baby, you could have kept that, sold it, threw it away. I didn't give a fuck. So I'm thinking that he never left. Me and my little cousin, we get in the car, we pull off. Why the fuck is he flying down Raymond Road, chasing us off? We pull off. I'm like, that bitch, pull off on the high speed train. So boom, we I'm getting on the interstate. I'm running lights and all. Why the fuck the fucking state trooper got behind me? Now mind you, the state trooper he pull up, he he pull us up. I immediately pull over. I put my he tells to put your hand through the wheel. What do y'all trying to run? What do this and that? I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm running from someone. Luckily, he called for backup, and the man that he called for backup was I used to promote parties and stuff when I was 14 and 15 and 16. So the man that he called for backup was one of the securities that used to be at the party. So he knew me. So he was like, No, I don't think they was trying to run. I know her, know her situation, or whatever. So he ended up letting us go. Boom, cool. Damn, I just told him something. Oh, I see y'all got pulled over. How the fuck do you see us on the other side of the interstate? Because you know, on the interstate, it's one going that way, and it's a lane going that way. Bitch, why are you in that lane watching me? Did you pull over to watch? So that same night, I ended up leaving and going over there by my uncle. And so my uncle, mind you, he hadn't saw my eye, and he didn't. I didn't even have to explain to him what happened. He kind of already knew. So I had told my uncle that he was chasing me or whatever. So he made him pull up over there, and me, and he just made it like sitting top face face. He was like, I ain't gonna get in the middle of y'all shit with you or whatever. But if you're gonna leave, if you're gonna be with her, keep keep your hands to yourself and be with her. If not, then leave her alone. So my dumb ass, I'm like, okay, yeah, we can be back cool. My dumb ass, my uncle just looking at me shaking his goddamn head. <laughs> The only reason I took him back though, cause he was out there in front of all them people on his knees, big, and I'm just like, oh my god, you on your knees? I'm hot. <laughs> dumb as fuck, you dumb bitch.
Mm, we got back together. Mind you, he beat my ass again. And then uh, we broke up for a good little while. And I'm, I'm serious. I, I did not go back with him after that. Like, I didn't. Then this around the time when the PPP loans and unemployment started coming. So, you know, I was most definitely didn't give up. I was, I feel like I was in my bag. Okay. So y'all remember the rapper that I was this rapper from the city that I was talking about that he accused me of talking to. So yeah, I did end up talking to him. So we end up doing the PPP. Uh, he did the PPP line. I end up doing the unemployment. Cool. I was working at Walmart. Everything was juicy, good, cool. So I end up finding out that him, the ice, and another girl was on the phone talking about me because. One of my little homegirls, she recorded that conversation. And I'm like, bitch, why is y'all on the phone talking about me? And if you know me, you know I hate when people talk about me. Like, I don't care if it could be your auntie or your grandma. I'm going to ask her, like, ho, why are you talking about me? So, my dumb ass, I end up, I'm like, you know, bitch, I'm going to beat your ass. Because why is you and this nigga talking about me? I'm going to beat your ass and I'm going to beat this nigga ass. So, at the time, I used to got a whole new girlfriend. Cool, he wasn't bothering me. I didn't give a fuck. But, bitch, don't be talking about me and you got a whole another bitch. Me and the girl had ended up fighting the girl that him, the other girl that he was talking about me with. We ended up fighting. We had fought like three times that night. I had got off work and I'm like, bitch, she all gonna whoop your ass. So we had ended up fighting. So that same night, I had ended up pulling up to his house. I'm like, bitch, come outside because I'm gonna beat your ass. He gonna tee toes. I ain't at home with the this and the third. So mind you, I, I ain't gonna lie. I used to watch his stories and I saw that he was posting a steering wheel of like a Volkswagen and I saw a Volkswagen parked on the side of his building. I look inside there, I'm like, this a bitch guy. So mind you, I stole the girl, I stole his girlfriend's head and he still didn't want to come outside. So I'm out, he stayed on the second floor. So I'm throwing rocks up to his wanted to get him to get his attention. Cause like, bitch, I'm heated. Like, I'm going to fight you. Like, for real, bitch, I did all the time you to whip my ass, bitch, I know how to fight. I end up busting his windows, his apartment windows. I end up busting the back window because I threw a big-ass rock up there, and I ended up knocking all the cameras down so he couldn't tell that it was me, but he had already knew it was me, but I didn't give a fuck because now, bitch, you can't see nobody. He mad as fuck. He mad in the motherfucker. So he wake up. Mind you, we on an all-night flight. He wake up. He shooting out his front window. He lift the window up. We running trying to get back to the car because I didn't park by his building. I had parked on down the street. We running down the street. He opened up his window. Pa, 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 pa. He busting it out. <laughs> Y'all, he was shooting at us. <laughs> He's shooting at us, and I'm running down Capitol Street. I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. He's shooting, I'm running. I'm like, damn, I hope he don't shoot me. <laughs> His eye ain't one accurate because he missed everyone. How you empty the clip and then hit your target? <laughs> so, I end up going back to my cousin's house. Then he driving around terrorizing everybody. He going to Taja house. He went outside Taja house, shooting outside of her house. Tell him, so where she at? I wasn't even out there. I wasn't even at her house, dumbass. He tells her where you at. I'm like, I'm in Brandon. Now, if you know, if you from Jackson, then you know Brandon, like, they don't play out there. Like, they, they real prejudiced. Like, you will go to jail and get a life sentence playing in Brandon. But I wasn't in Brandon. I was at my cousin's house. But he ended up coming to my cousin's house, and I see him. He outside, beat on the door, got the gun in hand. Boom, boom, boom. Knocking on the door, pulling up to pull up in the car with no tag. Dumbass, the tag in my purse. He tell my mama, my mama end up getting a tag for him. Ugh. So, boom, mind you, I go back to, I was told you I was dealing with the, the, the rapper man. We get money. I end up buying me a new car. He was mad. I didn't care. He found out. Did I care? No. He gonna tell you, you been fooling with him from when we was in Miami and I was like, no, the fuck I went, bitch. I just recently did that because you just got me messed up. Got under your skin, didn't it? <laughs> But after that, I really just didn't fool with him for a while. We went a good little minute without talking. I had started back dancing and everything was making. I, I went from making $100 every night to making damn near $1,000, $2,000 a night. Like, I was ending the week with almost four, dollars $5,000. Like, I was in a good space. I was dancing. I was getting the loans. I mean, I was getting the unemployment. And I was working at Walmart. Like, I was in my bag. I had stopped fucking with him. And I had got on my feet real good. And I'm like, maybe it's the nigga. The niggas will bring you down if you let them. Boom, a whole year went by. This is how I ended up getting pregnant, guys. Mind you, um, I forgot around that time when I was I had uh went to the hospital to like admit myself to get my stomach pumped. Nah, this was a different time. Breeze it. He had ended up going to jail one time around this time, like I said, when I was in the hospital, and his home one of his homeboys had ended up meeting, meeting us at the jail and he had got mad, but I'm like, you was talking to your homeboy while you was in the jail calling your homeboy and calling me. So how am I supposed to know he tells me he could have ratted on me, bitch. I didn't know if he ratted on you, you didn't fucking tell me. Anyway, we pulling out the jail parking lot, he whooped my ass while we pulling out the jail parking lot. Why the fuck is you doing that? But anyway, that same day me and him ended up getting too very bad. I ended up taking his gun and shooting at him. But yeah, he got his he, he that, that was for the old and the new. But I didn't shoot him, I shot at him. I probably should have shot him. 
All right, boom, fast forward back to um, what I was talking about. Boom, pee, 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 long, car, the rapper, all that. So, a year go by, me and him end up start back talking. So, it was only supposed to be like a one-night stand, y'all. Why did I get pregnant? <laughs> but I didn't know that I was pregnant at the time. But when I did the timeline, I'm like, I got pregnant the first time I started back fucking with you, bitch. This, this God didn't play with me. So, we end up... The, the one night stand turned into the long ass relationship once again so boom this was around december of the next year so we end up going to um vegas for my 20th birthday we ended up going to vegas um got told up had the time of our life mind you when we was in vegas he called himself wanted to be a pimp so it was two girls that he had to fly down there to vegas and he had got them a room at the same hotel that we was in and i didn't know until i had like realized because the girl the girl was from california you know, california and vegas not too far apart if i'm mistaken is it i don't think it is i don't know i gotta go look on the map but yeah i had woke up one day in the room I'm in the bed. I'm looking for him. He not in there. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning. And I'm calling him. I'm like, where the fuck you at? And I put two and two together. I said, these bitches down here. You done got them in a room at the same hotel. And you in the room with them? He goes, nah, I want nothing like that. Boom. I didn't worry about it. I, I was mad, but I wasn't that mad. Because I had I had the mind frame that I really just didn't care about him. No like, I was just really just using him for pee pee. We get back home. I just. I stopped dancing again. I end up going to school. I end up well, I was going to school. I don't know. Criminal justice. <laughs> this might be the last part that I got to do to, for today. I'll probably do the rest tomorrow because I got homework that I got to do. And I'm in school now for aviation. And I damn play, damn play that not doing your homework. Yet. But anyway, at this time I was in school. Um, I had found that I was pregnant. And when I found out I was pregnant, I was so mad. Because if I would have found out why I was by myself, and he didn't know I would have got an abortion but I found out with him there and I kind of told him like I didn't want the baby and I just saw him get mad to him so what baby mine I don't want it and I'm like damn I ain't gonna be able to get an abortion because I was wearing him all day every day I went I, I should have got one but I feel like if I would have got one he probably would have tried to unalive me because he ain't played this shit so boom I'm in school I'm pregnant I'm nauseous I didn't stop dancing immediately, but I had slowed down. I was still dancing while I was pregnant. And for him to have me still dancing while I'm pregnant is insane. A lot of dancers did it though. Not till I, when I got big, I just, you know, when I start showing, I just really just completely stopped and just focused completely on school. Clock Twitch, I remember the rapper that he had went through my, um, the rapper from my city. We had went through my mystery question so I saw boom. I had ended up talking to him or whatever. And this around the time when all the unemployment and PPP stuff was going on. So he had ended up, the rapper ended up doing the PPP loan. And I had was doing unemployment. I had ended up buying me a car, all that good stuff. Boom. Around this time, mind you, we had been broken up for a good minute. So I didn't even care what he was doing. Now, one of my homegirls, one of my little young homegirls, she um be around another girl that he used to talk to. Mind you, Eisner got a girlfriend, but he was still talking to the other girl. So the other girl that he was talking to that's not his girlfriend, my homegirl had recorded him and her on the phone talking about me. If you know me, then you know I hate when people be talking about me. So I asked him, I'm like, why is y'all talking about me? So I end up um, fighting the girl, the girl that him, Ice, and the, the other girl that he was talking to that, that was talking about me, I end up fighting her. I fought her like three times in one night when I had got over. work. Oh, and I had started back dancing too, y'all. I had one for making like hundreds of dollars to thousands of dollars a night. Like, I, that's the best I grew up I could have so yeah, boom, after I fight the girl, I pull up to um Ice's house. Now, his girlfriend is actually over there that time. So he not picking up the phone. He not texting back. He not responding. So I go over there throwing rocks at the one. But he's down the second floor. I was throwing rocks at the one because you finna come outside so we can fight. And he knew I can fight because we had been beating the head and whooped my ass so much. He knew I could fight. He want to come outside. So I end up I end up throwing a rock so big and bust his window. I bust his window and knocked all his cameras down. And I stole his girlfriend tag off her car. I did. I did, in fact, do that. He get mad, so then he come out, I, had, I guess after he heard his wonder bus, he come out his, way. Well, I can tell he came out his room, because he was, he put his, his firearm out the living room window, so all I see is him firing at us, pop, 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 mind you, the homegirl that had recorded, the other home, the girl, the homegirl that had recorded that phone call, she, her dumb self knew went with me. So we running down Capitol Street, getting shot at. Pop, 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 pop. 
this ain't his first time doing something like that, but I'm just, I'm just, I'm a up the firearm on him and released the firearm on him before too one time because he had beat me up in a jail parking lot when I had bundled him out because he was mad about that's a whole nother story I don't feel like telling but this ain't our first rodeo busting fire at each other so boom um we ended up finally getting away now how you you empty the clip and I hit your target your aim is not accurate buddy Boom, so that night I end up um, going back to my cousin's house and uh, going to sleep with the girlfriend tag my purse. When I think about it, I actually got that car after I did all that. But either way, go, I still got the car in that time frame. It was a brand new car or whatever, and I was still talking to the rapper from the city or whatever. But I didn't talk to him until after, okay? I went not talk to him then, so I don't want y'all to think I'm lying, and I did not lie to him. He ended up pu pulling up at my homegirl Tasha house, shooting her, end up getting her put out, dummy. He ended up pulling up to my cousin's house trying to look for me. I told him that I was in Brandon. Now, if you're from Jackson, then you know Brandon is real prejudice. If you go in Brandon and do any crime, you're nine times out of ten, you're going to get a life sentence. <laughs> anyway, he had pulled up to my cousin's house, beating on the door with his firearm in his hand, which I'd seen him outside, but my cousin opened the door and told him that I wasn't there. I was there, but I had to end up telling her everything that what happened. She was so mad. Matter of fact, I don't even think I really live with her no more after that. I think I had to end up moving back with my mama. Then he's such a baby. He go to my mama's house going off on my mama and stuff. So I'm going to get you and I'm going to get y'all daughter. And boy, shut up. She ended up coming over there and getting the tag and getting it to his mama. And then he ended up getting the girl, his girlfriend tag big. But y'all so dumb. Y'all over here right. Then he's so mad because when he had called me, he was like, I'm going to get you and we'll do, and we'll do this that, and the third. And I'm like, I'm like, you must be in the car. He was like, yeah, I'm on my way to you. And I'm like, how you driving a car with no tag? He bloop, bloop, bloop hung up the phone. <laughs> he called me. He goes, oh, you got the tag. But yeah, that, that was funny. Um, anyway, after that, we had stopped talking for like a whole year. Swear to God, after that, no, nothing. Me and him ended up coming across each other again because one night, my lonely self, leaving the club, drunk, ended up calling him for a one-night stand. I ended up going to his house, y'all. Why did I get pregnant that night? And I knew I got pregnant that night because I did the timeline from when I gave birth up until when my I had to conceive, and I had to conceive right then. I'm so Dumb, dumb ass, dumb ass, dumb ass. And when I said, when I took that pregnancy test, I took about four, five, six of the motherfuckers. I was not playing. I'm like, you got to get another one because I don't, this can't be right. And I hate I took it in front of him because if I didn't, I would have got an abortion. But he the type that up on the live view if he found out you aborted one of his kids. Uh, I think I might be missing some stuff. I don't know. I can't remember. Um, start talking to him for beat the girl up, stole her check. I was talking for a year, dancing, making my own money, got me a car, did the unemployment. Then, oh, by the way, I paid the unemployment people back, so. Um, did the unemployment, got pregnant on the first time, like I told me, it took me one pregnancy test. Um, I did end up going to school, and so for a little while, we did end up getting back together after that, which I didn't want to, but I always said if I had a baby, I want to have a big, happy family. I don't know why I thought I might would have a big, happy family with him, but I did think that. Why did I, why did I think that? I don't know. Apparently, I'm going to do much thinking around that time. I'm trying to remember what else happened. I don't know. I did it twice. Let me go watch the other video. I'm going to watch the video for this in my life. I want to watch the other video to see what all I put in there to, so it can match. So this part three can just match up and go directly to part four. But I don't know. I found out I was pregnant and a series of events happened. He beat me up. Mm. I don't know. I might do part five. I don't know. This part three though. Okay, now mind you, I'm pregnant. Don't know I'm pregnant. So we end up going to Vegas for my birthday. And he called himself wanting to be a pimp. So it was two girls that was from California that he had to come to Vegas. Because California not very far from Vegas. Why he end up getting these girls a room at the same room that we was in? I wake up one day looking for him. He not even in the room. He at the other room. So I'm calling him. I'm like, where you at? But me, I already know I'm known with you. I'm like, where you at? He was telling some, oh. I'm at the hotel. I'm like, nah, you down up in the room with your girl. He tells him, nah, he ain't not like that. Yes, it is. Stop lying. Mm, yeah, I ended up being pregnant, finding out, I mean, getting pregnant. I know I'm pregnant, going to Vegas for my birthday, um, finding out a little while after, and um, go to part four. I might be forgetting something, but I don't know. It's okay. Did I get beat up in Vegas? No, I didn't get beat up in Vegas. But he did get to arguing with the rapper from the city in Vegas on live off my phone. And I'm like, you been wanting to say this <laughs> This is, damn, oh, let me see this three of them. 
this purple. So, um, mind you, found out I was pregnant, was in school, dancing and all that. I ain't gonna lie, y'all, when I took them pregnancy tests, I took about four or five of them hoes. <laughs> I was like, uh-uh, go get another one, because this is wrong. <laughs> I was running around the house like the camera man be chasing them people from Maury. I ain't lying. So when I found out I was pregnant, you know, things kind of smoothed down a little bit. It wasn't too bad. It was all right. He did not put his hands on me for like a whole two, three months, y'all. And I was like, okay, maybe he changed. He didn't change. <laughs> <coughs> One day he choked the shit out of me. I don't remember what I did. I wasn't that big though, but I'm like, you doing this, I'm pregnant. Nah, gotta go. It was the same cycle. Leave and come back, leave and come back, leave and come back. At this time, he was making me. We was when we used to do the do. We always used to do the do with like three people, as in me, him, and it was always a third girl. But this time, he was trying to make me do it while I was pregnant. Like I really ain't put it, but I ended up doing it because I was scared that if I said no, he might just choke my ass out again. This particular time, he ended up. Um, I ended up. We ended up doing it with one of his neighbors. The neighbor wasn't even the neighbor. The neighbor was a girl that he had been dealing with. The girl had got pregnant, and then she ended up having a miscarriage. So technically, she uh, is a baby mama too. But this girl was obsessed with me. She wasn't even obsessed with him. She was obsessed with me, and she get on my nerves. And uh, we end up doing a do with her. We end up doing a do with another girl. Boo. I'm doing all this while I'm pregnant, mind you. I was just so stressed, and it's just so nasty, and I just need to be... I need to be forgiven for those things because I already got my punishment for doing that while I was pregnant. It's a lot of other things that happen within that time frame, but I don't feel like talking about it because it's going to end up being 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 parts, and I don't feel like that. So, boom, I'm going to fast forward towards, like, the mid-end of my pregnancy. I really went around him as much. I ended up staying at my mama's house more than I did at his house because he was cheating on me a lot, and I knew that he was cheating on me, and at that point, I just, like, didn't care no more because it was like, you know, I don't feel like dealing with this Long story short, I also did not finish school for criminal criminal justice. I didn't finish because I, I I couldn't. I went to school again, but the second time, they still couldn't finish. He used to swear I was cheating on him. I'm like, I'm pregnant, but pregnant people do cheat. I realized it. So I'm going to just fast forward around to the time where I lost my baby. I had one to one of my appointments, per usual. Appointment went fine. The only thing was when I was on the way to my doctor's appointment, um, my car had broke down. So y'all remember I was telling you about the girl, the neighbor, his baby mama, <coughs> dad, the miscarriage. He had ended up sending her over to drop me off at my appointment and pick me back up. Ugh. So when she dropped me off, I told her just drop me off at his house. Like, I don't want you to take me to my house because I don't want you to know where I live at. Like, you're already weird. And that was the day we got the fighting. At the time, I had started working at um, a PCA, you know, sitting, sitting with, I was sitting with a quadriplegic man, taking care of him and helping him. And he had just called to check in on me. He was like, hey, how you doing? How the baby doing? And he was like, he was like, okay, he was like, go ahead and have that baby so you can come back and, you know, you can get to work so we can see her or whatever. And I started laughing, like, you know, like, oh, thank you. And God, he got livid. He said, you on the phone laughing at this nigga? What, what, what did he do that? He not even a... a He's white. He's not a nigga. <laughs> so, boom, he come there. He immediately, I'm in the bathroom on the phone. He's running right across from the bathroom. So, he, of course, he heard me, but I wasn't trying to hide it. Boom, he immediately pushed me on the tub. I fall on the side of the tub. Mind you, I'm eight months pregnant, so my stomach in the tub. So, it's like, damn, like this shit hurt. So, he dragged me out the bathroom. He immediately started punching me, choking me, punching me in my stomach, kicking me in my stomach. Like, at this point, I'm, like, leaking fluid. And I'm like, hold on, wait, stop, stop, stop. He ain't stop. So I lock my, I crawl back in the bathroom. I lock myself in the bathroom. My purse, I had a taser. The same taser that he got me told me about if I ever get, if I ever need help or something, yeah, I'm going to use it on you. So I tried to tase him and it didn't work. So he pulled out his gun. <laughs> he thought that I was going to fight him. Cause at that point, like I had started fighting him back and he like realized like this girl know how to fight now. So I, when I fought back, like I fought back, like I was turning his little self every way but loose. He put a gun out on me, so I ended up running outside, y'all. I ended up running outside and trying to run away. I ended up running down the street, and one of um his homegirl, not his homegirl, but my homegirl, she ended up coming to get me. Well, she not even really my homegirl because she is my homegirl now. But at the time, my ex-best friend, his girlfriend. So she ended up coming to get me. 
and they stayed in the same apartment complex too. She ended up coming to get me, and I told her to like drop me off at the hospital. And they and him, him and my ex best friend ended up getting in the car and finding this because she was gonna take me to the hospital. We was right there by the hospital, but he called her, and I guess he threatened her. She ended up turning around and getting scared, so I ended up getting out the car while it was moving because I'm not going back there. I'm not. I'm walking down the street, pregnant, beat up. I ain't stunned it. They end up finding me. They trying to chase me, but I'm pregnant, so I can't really run too fast. So, um, we fought for a little minute outside the street. He ended up making me get in the car, of course. He told me that he was going to take me home, which he didn't. He ended up taking me to his house. I go to his house, and I didn't go home for like two, three days. Like, I wanted to go home so bad that he would not let me go home. He would not let me leave out the apartment. He would not let me do nothing but sit in the room. And I told him, I'm like, I'm not going to call the police. Like, I'm not going to do nothing. Like, I just want to go home. Or you can really just drop me off at the hospital. Like, I'm not going to tell him what happened. Just drop me off at the hospital. I'm telling him, like, I don't feel good. Like, I don't, I just didn't feel good. I had a bad feeling. Like, like my body was physically hurting already. But it's like, I did not feel good. So, at that point, when you that far along, well, I don't know if everybody liked it, but my doctor liked it. I had appointments every two weeks. So, every two weeks, I would go to the doctor. So, by this time... It was halfway through the week, so then my point was at the end of that following week. So I had went, hmm. I went to my appointment, and it was uh, like an OB in training. It's my OB, and it was another girl that was, you know, she was going to school for, it. and she was like, "Is it fine if she, you know, do my um, go through my appointment with me?" And I was like, "I was fine." And the girl that was, and I feel so bad for this girl still to this day. Girl, if you see me or remember me, I'm sorry, and I love you. I'm sorry he did that to us. She was. She did the little Doppler thing to try to find a heartbeat. And then she looked over at me. And then she looked back at the Doppler. And then she looked at me. And she said, "Let me just try it again." She tried to add some more gel. And she tried it again. She said, "Um." I just saw the look on her face. I was like, my heart started racing. I was like, "Oh my gosh!" She was like, "Let me go get your OB." That was just it. The OB come in and she tried. And my OB did it once. She did it in another area. And she just kept moving it around. And she kind of, she kind of sad like I just did, but like I could tell she wasn't trying to. She was like, "What we gonna do?" She said, "We just gonna take you in and do a full sonogram." She took me to the other room. She did the full sonogram. She, you know, when the sonogram is on the screen, if you know how to read one, you can tell if like the heartbeat or not. So I saw it, and it, that screen, it just looked different than any other screen that I have ever saw. Anyone that I have ever gotten, it just looked completely different. And I was just like, damn. I was like, damn. She was like, I'm sorry. She was like, I'm sorry to tell you this, but, like, your, your baby don't have no heartbeat. And I was like, what you mean? And she just like, your baby doesn't have a heartbeat. And I just paused for, like, a long time. The student in training, she was teary-eyed and she had to leave the room. The doctor, she, I could tell her voice was cracking. I was like, oh my God. She was like, she gave me these papers. She told me I need to call everybody. I need to call. I had, I had to have somebody come up there and get me because they would not let me drive because I was hysterical. Um, She told me to pack my bags and that she was going to meet me at the hospital. So um, we was going to go for from there. Um, my, my, I can't remember my, um, we ended up just sitting in the parking lot at the doctor's office until, like, my mama came, because my, I didn't want to drive, no, didn't want to drive, my ex best friend didn't want to drive, nobody wanted to drive, they wouldn't let me drive, and I just remember getting in the car with my mama, and, Passing a hospital that I had to, that I was gonna deliver at, which is the hospital that I did deliver at, and I just was screaming like I just was screaming like I was shrieking like I was, I, I was just crying and I called and I told everybody and at this time my uncle that I was closest with I was so sad because he was in jail and it's like I felt so long it's like I feel like I don't. It's kind of hard to describe it, but I went home, I picked my bags, I ate, because I didn't know if I was going to be able to eat. Um, I'm going to do a part for I'm going to fast forward from this, but we'll talk to everybody, and I pray with my grandma, because she's a sister in the church, and... <laughs> Not a sister in the church, but y'all know what I mean. She within the church family. And
I got out of school. I'm using this comment because I agree with it. And I never really talk with nobody about it. I always talked about it. So at this point, of course, this is part five. Please bear with me because this is the part when I actually had to give birth. I go to the hospital. I meet my doc. I check in. I meet my doctor. It was so crazy because it's like when I walked in, everybody knew. The nurses, the doctors. I think my doctor pre-prepped everybody. They did my vitals, drew my blood, admitted me. They did that little suicide questionnaire a lot. When I say a lot, I mean, I got it. I got it done every day. Even after I was there, I got it done every day. They told me that I couldn't have a C-section because my baby was deceased. It was a chance of me catching an infection, so I had to do a vaginal birth. And they had to induce my labor. When they induced my labor, I did get an epidural because that shit hurt. <laughs> the first day was... I was going to say normal, but it wasn't normal. We sat and waited. They checked to see how far I was. Is it dilated? They checked. They, they kept sticking my finger on my hula. They literally fed me whatever I wanted to eat. Um, they didn't leave me alone a lot. At the most, I was probably like alone for maybe like an hour. They was in and out, in and out, in and out, constantly checking on me unless my family was there. If my family was there, they didn't really bother me. Second day, it was cool. It was fine. Until that night. That night, they did not want to let my baby daddy in the room because, like I said, it was during, it was a little bit after COVID. Um, well, it's still during COVID. There were supposed to be no visitors after 9 a.m., I believe it was. He got mad because the nurses wouldn't let him up. I, I don't think that the nurses liked my baby daddy from the first impression because his first impression, he was supposed to come to the hospital with me, but he didn't come. My mama had came and took me because he had wanted to go to one of his friends' candlelight, but I was telling him, like, I need you here. Understanding that you want to go to this candlelight, but I kind of need you here. And he chose to go to the candlelight, so I was like, you know what, okay, my mama just go through with me. Nurses asked about him. I just told them where he was, and they was like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But that night of the second day, he wanted me to sign the um, uh, a AMA against medical advice. He wanted me to leave so we can go to a different hospital because he was mad about them not letting him in. But I was like, you can't. They eventually let him in because I told them, I was like, what if I want to leave? And I was like, my dumb ass, I can't even leave. I got a fucking epidural on my bed. Mm, he slept all night. It was fine. It was cool. I went into labor on day three. It was so funny because I was telling the nurse, I was like, um, I got to go to the bathroom. I got to go do the number two. She was like, um, hold on. I'm going to come to the room. I had pressed on the little remote thing. I was telling her I had to go to the bathroom. She was like, okay, I'm going to come in your room. But why she leave up that blanket? She looked at me. She said, hold on. You don't have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I was like, I do have to go to the bathroom. Yes, I do. Mind you, my baby daddy was not there. Oh, I keep calling him Nick Gross. Ice. The nigga name is Ice. He wasn't there, but I had called him. He was in the area. I was like, I think I'm about to give birth because they're bringing doctors and nurses and bedpans and towels and all type of stuff in. When I tell y'all, they came flooding in and like five, six, she went outside to the hallway. She came back in five, six, and there's about 10 doctors and nurses in that bitch all together. At this point, I'm talking to him on my Apple Watch because I couldn't, I didn't want to have my phone in my hand because even though I had an epidural, I kind of could still feel it and it didn't feel good. He was like, he was downstairs and he was trying to get, um, the girl that he was trying to get in, I'm going to talk about her later, but he was cheating on me with her, and I didn't know at the time. I thought that she was my, like, I thought we me and her was friends, but apparently we wasn't friends because she was in love with my baby daddy, but, ugh, ice. She was in love with ice, but, um, yeah, there's that. Anyway, he was trying to get her in to come to the delivery room, which he didn't even ask me. I'm like, you don't even ask me if I want, I didn't want nobody in here but you and these other people. Like, what are you doing? If that was the case, I would have told my mama or my sister to come if you was going to be disrespectful like that. So he downstairs at the security desk trying to get her in because she don't have no ID to get a band. whole time I'm upstairs giving birth. I'm on yelling, screaming. I'm scared. I'm crying. I'm shaking. There's so much going on. So many people holding my hand. It's just, it's crazy. So it wasn't as bad as I thought, like, the baby came, they grabbed her and they took her out the room. Yeah, why I didn't know that I had to keep pushing? They was like, we gotta get the placenta out. <laughs> I'm like, you don't get it, and then come out with the baby. I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, it didn't come out. Y'all, why they start pushing on my stomach? Boom. He walk in as they trying to get the placenta out. So he come in, he hold my hand. He like, it's okay, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay. I'm just looking at him, I'm mad, I'm shaking, I'm in pain. I'm just like, oh, fucking over it. 
He talked about, this my baby, here come my baby. I'm like, you dumb idiot. The, the baby already gone. They, they took the baby out. Now you trying to get this girl in. They still didn't let her in. They let him in, but they didn't let her in because he had the daddy be in. So, um, they took my baby. They cleaned her up. They asked me if I wanted to do, like, a photo shoot with her blanket and her clothes and whatever. And I was just like, yeah, of course. They cleaned her up. We took pictures. We took videos. We counted all her toes and her fingers. And that was that. And then after that, he went and got me some food. And then he left. After that, they moved me to a, a bigger room. Uh, we had a lady from like the document department, I guess. She came in. She uh, We filled out the death certificate because we... We can we couldn't do a birth certificate because I mean she it wasn't a live birth it was a stillborn so we had to do a death certificate. He had to sign it. I had to sign it. I was irritated because I'm he steady trying to leave again and I'm like you have to sign this paper that this lady is bringing for the death certificate. He tells him I know but she takes too long. Why are you in such a rush? Like I understand that men grieve differently, but if I'm going through something I'm in shambles. I'm trying to be there for you, and I need you to be there for me. We can't even be there for each other because he trying to do God knows what. I didn't even care at that point. And it's crazy because at this time, he was in... I don't want to go into that. Yes, I do want to go into that. So at the time, he was in tour with one of my brothers, uh, one of my homeboys. I called my brother because I knew him for a long time. Um, he was in tour with him, and he was trying to get me to get him to come to the hospital to come see me, like, trying to get me to set him up. And I'm like, I'm not going to call him up here, and I know that y'all in tour. Like, that's crazy. I'm not doing it. He just took it what it was, left it, left it, left it as it was. I was in the hospital. Then the next day, because I was in the hospital a total of two weeks. So the next day, everything was fine, went smooth. My family came and saw me. It was it was I was content for a while. I had finally talked to my doctor after she damn near wanted to cry. We laying down watching TV. They were giving me um, Percocets for my pain, but it was a certain point like I wasn't in pain no more. And he telling me he like tell him you in pain and to bring you another. He wanted my Percocet. Did I give it to him? Yes, because I was dumb. But, I mean, I wasn't in pain, so I didn't need it. I just told them that I wanted it, and I gave it to him, which I probably shouldn't have did that, but I did. I would never do that again, FYI. Boom. Nightfall come. I guess he, mind you, we ain't really had to touch each other. It was so much going on. He talking about, do I want to put it in, in my mouth? Mind you, we been in the same hospital bed because his fat ass didn't want to sleep on the couch or something. He wanted to get in the hospital bed with me. Why? Did I do it? Yes, I did. After I did it, I got up and I went to the bathroom. He had to help me to the bathroom because I really couldn't. I, I was in pain. I was weak. I couldn't even really walk through. Why did I go in the bathroom and I cried 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 and I couldn't stop crying. He asked me why I was crying. I'm like, I'm in pain. I just, I'm just in pain. That's why I'm crying. And that's when I kind of realized, like, this man really don't care about me. Like, you asking me to do that in the hospital on multiple occasions. You asking me for my pain medicine. You asking all the wrong questions. Fast forward to that morning. They were about to discharge me so I can go home. They asked me if I was okay, if I was fine. They discharged me so I could go home. I'm waiting on him. He's taking forever. It's going to take him like an hour to get back to the hospital, even though he was one nothing but 10, 15 minutes away. He didn't even come up to roll me down like I was gonna end up walking down by myself but the nurses wouldn't let me they got a wheelchair and they rolled me rolled me downstairs I got in a car we ended up going to his house he didn't want me to stay at his house because he had the girl that he was trying to get in the hospital he had her there around with some more of his friends but at the time I'm thinking all of them are friends so I'm not knowing that they sneaking and geeking behind my back you know when you get out the hospital, you're really not supposed to leave the house or go around or do too much your first six weeks. Why does this man make me drive myself to my mama's house in his car? He didn't even want to drop me off or give me an Uber. He made me drive myself. Did I drive myself? Yes, I did. I got my baby necklace. Let me add a picture of it. I'm going to add a video. I'm going to put it in the video. The necklace is broke. No, I don't want to show my baby face because, I mean, it's my baby. And I broke the front glass on it. This the necklace, it got um, ashes in the back and it's real heavy. Oh, sorry, Abel. 
Oh, by the way, I did in fact get an infection after. I had to go back to the hospital. But um, I had the video over. At this point, I drove myself home. I give my mom all my bags, my medication. Basically, everything that they gave me, I gave to her. She asked me where he was. I told her where he was. He was at home. I guess he could handle it. He made me drive myself home. Which, again, if you don't know, when you first out of the hospital, after you just have a baby, regardless of, of if you have a stillborn or not, you're at risk for infection. You're at risk for a setback. What did I have? I had a setback. The first few days, I didn't know. I just knew that I was in pain. I couldn't move. The only th I, was, I had so much medication that I was taking, I, I couldn't even function. And it was really hard for me around the time mentally because, like... I would try to go to sleep, but like I couldn't. You know how you sleep, but you're not sleep. Like your eyes just closed, but you're resting. But you, you know, you can't go to sleep. I couldn't sleep well because at that time I would try to go to sleep, but I would hear a baby crying, like a baby crying at the distance, and I would be thinking that it's my baby. But me forgetting that my baby is gone, I didn't leave the hospital with a baby. And then I would have dreams or nightmares or vision. I would think that I'd be seeing the baby, and I wouldn't. I'd be feeling for my baby. My baby wouldn't be there. And that kind of just. That messed me up real bad. <laughs> now, even though I was taking medication, I feel like I wasn't getting better. I feel like I was getting worse. My temperature wouldn't go down. My temperature was going up. I would be, have, I be, I be, ugh. I hate when I stutter. I would have the chills. I would feel like I'm burning on fire, just so much. A few days later, I go back to the hospital. Went to the hospital, they told me I had an infection in my uterus, of course. Did I have a setback? Yes, I did, once again. He come up there, he stayed three days. I'm up there and I'm filled and pumped with antibiotics. The only thing I smell like is antibiotics. I'm tasting antibiotics. I smell like antibiotics. I feel like I'm being pumped with antibiotics. It was so dangerous to the point of where they felt like I could have gotten septic and passed away, but I didn't. The doctor said I was lucky. He come and get me from the hospital. We go to his house, we chill for a while, then the funeral home lets me know that I could come pick my baby up. I'm gonna fast forward to maybe like a month ahead of time. This when we end up finding out that his best friend, AKA my ex best friend, ended up getting shot and unalive in his car, in Ice's car now. They were looking for Ice, but they ended up shooting his best friend. He gets mad, he blamed everybody but himself, of course. But I don't know, I can't even really say that he was at fault because I don't really even really know like what they had going on for that. But I just, all of that was a blur to me because at this point I wasn't even mentally there. He gets mad at me because I I, I don't react. I don't really too much feel nothing because it's like you want me to feel something for somebody that I don't care about. Also at this point, he became a person that I no longer rec recognized. Like he was worse than he hadn't ever been before. And this would make me feel like he was on some type of hard drug. Like you, your your baby gone, your best friend gone, everybody leaving you, and you don't know who to blame. Then he was also upset because the family wouldn't let him come to the funeral, which I don't blame them because this boy been around you and you you older than him. You supposed to be protecting him and you didn't. So we're gonna fast forward to November. This is around his birthday time. So we go to the cabins to Gatlinburg for his birthday because he feel like I guess we needed to trip away. Why was that the worst trip I ever been on with him in my life? Worse than Miami when he hit me in the head with a phone. I got physically, mentally, and verbally abused so bad. We were drinking, having fun. Y'all, why did this man put X pills in the Patron bottles? <laughs> Stop! So me being me, of course, if y'all haven't realized, I play a lot. So me and him was playing. I like to play fighting. He knows when I play fighting. So I guess he took me serious. He felt like I was playing on his top, which I wasn't. He proceeds to knock me out. I get up and I try to run upstairs. Why would I run upstairs? Some way, somehow, he made it to the top of the stairs before I did. He pushed me down the stairs, y'all. Did he end up making it to the bottom of the stairs before I did? Y'all know the little floor lamps? The, the real, real long ones with the thing on the top? The real, real long floor lamps? Why he hit me in the head with the end of the floor lamp? I'm like, I know you just ain't hit me with no lamp, boy. But I ain't gonna lie, he known for using objects because, yeah, when I say he hit me with a police baton at one time, and I'm trying to sit here and figure, I ain't even stunning him beating me up. I'm trying to sit here and figure out, where did you get this police baton from? <laughs> How did you get this? But yeah, he hit me with the floor lamp. He roughed me up a little bit. He ended up telling me to go upstairs and lay, lay, my, lay, lay down, which is exactly what I did. 
The next morning, we end up going to the um, Ripley's, believe it or not, the museum. Y'all, I didn't even want to be in that museum. My head was hurting. Everybody that we was on the trip with was having fun. Mind you, they witnessed this, but I guess they was good to say so, but I don't know. I didn't even care at that point. He mad because I'm not enjoying myself. Sir, I might have a concussion. So he just ended up taking me back to the room trying to talk about it. I didn't want to talk about it because not only did he beat me up that night, he told me that I was the reason that my baby was gone. He told me that I was the reason that his best friend got shot. He told me that I was the reason that his life is going downhill. I guess it's just only you that was affected by, by our baby. I mean, you it was only you that was affected by your best friend, don't get me wrong. But you... I, <laughs> he just told me I was the reason for everything. You know, I play a lot I had my share of words, but you know, I don't bring nobody down or I don't break nobody down. You know, I don't do that. If anything, you know, I, if anything, you know, I just be quiet and, you know, try to help you figure it out or try to find out the problem. You know, I, I, I ain't that type of person. We leave in Gatlinburg early because he's mad because I'm not having fun. I'm not having fun because I'm in pain, I'm hurting, and you just broke my heart by telling me that I'm the reason that my baby gone. Me already feeling like that because I should have protected my baby. I shouldn't have even been with him after the first time he put his hands on me. I should have been with him the first time he put his hands on me while I was pregnant. I should have left because I could have saved my baby. My baby could have still been here if I would have made the right decisions, but I didn't make the right decisions, and that's the consequences of my decision. We get home. Everybody asks me, did we have fun? What do I do? Lie and tell them yes. I tell them we had the best time in the world. So around this time, he got to the point where, we make it back around this time, he got to the point where he just going around the city terrorizing everybody that he think could have unalived his best friend, which caused other people to be mad at him. So what did he do? He run back to his hometown. He from Louisiana, so he runs back to Louisiana. He's in Louisiana for Christmas towards the you know towards the end of december and towards the new year this is when he called himself proposing to me one day he so he was drinking a lot so he facetimed me and he set the phone up like this he facetimed me with his phone sitting up like this on the car hood with his sister standing behind him it was some more people i didn't know who them people was i ain't even there he gonna ask me talking about I love you, whoop, whoop, this long, over-exaggerated explanation that I really just wasn't even listening to. Then he popped the question, talking about, I want to be with you for the rest of my life. Will you marry me? Me being me, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, of course, my dumb ass. Then I'm sitting here thinking, do I want to marry this person? Then he goes on to proceed, I want us to buy a house in the country. In the country? You want to marry me and buy a house in the country so that if you want to lie me, you can use the crime of passion as to why you did that? No. Mm -mm. So at this point, I'm scared. I'm actually thinking about, like, this man want me to be with him forever. Like, if I sign those papers, if this actually happens, this is the person that I can be stuck with. No, thank you. Who working in that car? So, New Year's come around. He finally come back to Jackson. He come to Jackson two o'clock in the morning, talking about he want to pop some fireworks. Baby, no, I don't want to pop no fireworks. I don't even know why you think I want to see you right now. I'm still not happy. And I told him like, I'm not happy. We end up getting into it like a few days later, like real bad because I just want feeling the vibe. He was steady like around this girl. Oh, I got to tell y'all what the girl did. He steady around his this, this girl that he tried to bring to the hospital. And I'm like, bro, no. He's gonna say, you gonna make me choose this either you or Yes, it make her choose. Yeah, why did he tell me about some, she be protecting him, she rise or die, she this and that. At that point, I was done. I was like, okay, you know, you can choose her because y'all, I gotta say, go to the next video because I'm gonna tell y'all the conversation that me and this girl had which made me feel like this. We had this conversation like a few days after, but the video finna end, so just go to Barsi.
Okay, y'all remember the girl that he was trying to sneak into the delivery room? Okay, me and her over over this time, we had gotten real close because she didn't have a lot of friends. I didn't have a lot of friends. Well, I had a lot of friends, but he was the type where he didn't like me to be around my friends because my friends would talk sense to me. So whenever I went around my friends, it was a problem. But if I was around her, it wasn't a problem. So one day she told me how like she loved me. You know, I was one of the best friends she had ever had. Y'all, why was she sleeping with them? So one day we all meet at his mom's house, like shortly after the hospital, after he get after he get back from Louisiana, and after I accepted his proposal, but in reality in my mind I didn't. She tell me that she's in love with him. I'm like, girl, no, you not, cause you don't know this man. He ain't never not one time showed you the real him. So at this point, it's taking everything in me not to drag this garden tool up and down the street i just end up going home because i asked him i'm like if this if this is the case if she feeling like that and you around her all the time and y'all been doing this and doing that and thinking i'll be cool with this mm -mm. no i don't even want you to pick me up pick her pick her he didn't pick her she get mad she do she end up doing so much to get his attention y'all why this girl drive her car to a pole begging for him to come come to her and save her did he know he did not he was in the bed with me but i kind of felt bad because i'm like this girl almost finna kill herself to get your attention baby go save your girlfriend he eventually realized that's not what he wanted because that girl was crazy so boom we're gonna fast forward a few weeks i had finally got the strength to tell him that i didn't want to be with him no more i couldn't tell him over the phone so i had to send him a long text message Tell me one after I sent him the text message, he come to my mama's house. I'm there by myself. Just really just me and my nephew. He telling me to open the door, telling me that telling me he know I'm there and that he finna come in. I'm like, don't come in, don't bother me, don't do none of that. Why they man breaking my mama's house? My mama don't feel like he broke in the house because he been at the house before and he always at the house. But if I tell you not to come in, don't come in. If I got out of doors locked, how did you end up in here? So what I did, I saw him and I immediately ran out the house. I didn't have no, I only had on like a t-shirt and some underwear. I ended up running at the house, y'all. Going to my neighbor's house. My neighbor didn't want to open the door because she told me, you might be a burglar. Girl, do you not see me on your ring camera naked and afraid for my life? So I ended up running down the street to uh, my other neighbor's house. Well, I really want my neighbor's house. It was really, really on far down the street, but I I knew them because I'm the side of my side a few times. They ended up giving me some clothes. I called the police. Well, I took the police two hours to get there. Police get there, we go up there to, we go back up there, well, I go back up there to my mama's house. The police said I already made it there. He got my nephew standing outside. I get my nephew, he had my phone, so me not realizing what he could have did in my phone was standing, I just wanted him gone. The police told him they can't um, legally kick him out because he didn't stay here before longer than 30 days, whoop, whoop, whatever, bitch down the third. He just stayed in him, getting all his clothes, everything, and leaving. So tell me why. I go look at my phone the next day because I'm, I'm trying to go to work. I go look at my phone the next day and all my money is gone. I can't put gas in my car. And I'm looking, why did he send all my money to himself? I was so pissed. I didn't have no money, not a dime. All the money in my savings, gone. All the money in my checkings, gone. All the money in my Apple Pay and my cash shop, gone. I used to keep money distributed in different places for different things. Everything was gone. So I'm asking him, I'm like, why did you take all my money? He gonna tell me something. I took his life. Boy, I didn't take nothing. I didn't beat you up. You beat me up. I ended up disputing it all from my bank. He wasn't able to use his cash up no more, his Apple Pay, nothing. He get mad at me. How you mad because I want my money back? Tell me something. I owe him for what? What do I owe you? You took the best years of my life. Beat me up and shit. So at this point, he on straight stalker time. I'd be laying on the couch in my mama's house. And how my mama's house is, it's a bunch of, uh, she got a bunch of big windows and this big glass door to the backyard. Why well, I see him run across the backyard trying to see if the window's open. What I did, ran in the closet, he didn't call the police again. He's sitting at the end of the street, takes me, tells me to stop calling the police. I'm like, how did you get my new number? So at about three police reports, the first time I was scared to press charges, the second time it was a police that I knew that I had no with the school with. He was like, if you don't press charges, we're going to press charges. So the state ended up pressing charges against him. And at that point, I ended up, um, no, it was a third time where I called the police. 
it was the third time where I called the police because I was on my way to work. Mind you, I used to work, I used to have to be at work at 7 o'clock. My job was like 30 minutes from my house. So I used to get up at like 5.45 to get ready, get my coffee and eat everything. And I would see him like driving through the neighborhood early in the morning. Call the police, file the police report. And I had told myself and I had told my friends, I'm like, I got the police reports. I, it's documented. Like, if he come bother me again, then no, I'm going to have to pew pew him. Because at this point, I'm scared for my life. Why are you following me? I took it upon myself to move to another state because it's like, no matter who I was, like my friends believe me, but other people, they just would not believe me. They feel like I was doing the most. I ended up moving to another state, get my life together, getting on track. Y'all, why did he find out I moved to Texas and tried to come to Texas and find me? I ain't gonna tell y'all how he, he found out because he did ask one of my family members, but I'm not gonna tell you which family member. But at that point, like I was scared because I'm like, you follow me, you finding out where I live, like I didn't move six hours away from you. How are you finding my residence? He talking like he bought me a car. I don't want that car. I don't want it so you can put a tracker on it and, and run me off the road. No, because that's what I'm thinking you're gonna do. No. So a few months later, you remember the girl I was telling you about that claimed that she was my friend, but she really was sleeping with him behind my back. They talking about some she went missing. That girl didn't go missing. That is not the type of girl that just go missing, disappear off social media, do this, that, and third. She don't do nothing. She don't do stuff like that. She is a social media influencer, and she's not even an influencer. She be on social media like clockwork like that. So I told them, I'm like, that girl don't do no stuff like that. I'm like, that girl is somewhere unalived. I go read the news articles in my city. It's a house that had been burnt up with a person and that was shot in the back of the head. And I told myself and I told a lot of other people, I'm like, I believe that's her because that's her. You ain't finna tell me it's not her. Guess what they say two months later? That is her. I know what I'm talking about. That man crazy, girl. I told you that man was crazy. You don't know how to play on him like I know how to play on him. Girl, I had to save my life plenty of times. You feel me? I had to lay beside that monster plenty of nights to save my life. You don't know how to handle nobody like that. You feel me? I'm very smart, okay? After that, a few months more, a few more months pass, and they end up telling me that he got shot. And I'm like, yeah, he ain't just shot. Like, he probably unalived because his sister posted crying emojis and stuff on Facebook. Like, he gone. So I get what I did through a barbecue. Cook real good. Ate some good food. I feel like I can move on with my life. I feel like I was free, and I hate... I ain't gonna say that I hate to say that, but like, that's a, it's an unfortunate thing to say because how one person can cause so much trauma and cause so much pain and cause so much hurt to the point where they only feel relieved when you're not on this earth no more. You've done all these things to me and all these things to these people as if God forget. you doing all this wrong and ain't putting in no good. You feel me? You're doing unnecessary wrong. These people ain't wronged you. You're wronging them for no reason. you wronging them because your life messed up because of the decisions that you made. And with that being said, it's October, so it is Domestic Violence Month. And I feel like if it's anybody out there in, the, in a domestic violence relationship, I feel like you should leave. I know it might be hard. I know you might feel like it's impossible, but it's not impossible. You just have to figure it out a way. And I know it's easier said than done. Best believe me, I know it's easier said than done. It took me two and a half years, really three years, to get rid of him and get away. I feel like if he was alive still to this day, he wouldn't even be bothering me for real. Because I ain't gonna lie, I ain't, I wasn't going for none of this for real. He knew that, like... He knew what type of person I was. Like, I'm going to defend myself. I'm going to defend myself. I don't fear no man because we all bleed the same, baby. So if you feel like you're stuck, again, leave. If you take the help that they're trying to give you, listen, that man do not, if a man is putting his hands on you, if a man is physically abusing you, if a man is mentally abusing you, he do not love you. He do not care about you. It's a lot of women that I have saw not make it out and lose their life at the hands of a man because they can't find the strength. If you can't find the strength for yourself, find it for somebody else. If you can't find it for somebody else, find it for your kids. Just find it and leave. So many beautiful women, so many young girls that we have lost to men that are incapable of expressing their emotions and don't know how to handle their feelings and that were just raised wrong. Yes, if a man is abusive, he was raised wrong. I don't care if he's your star living sunshine, he was raised wrong. And, and like I tell my brothers, if you ever put your hands on a female, I will track you down and hunt you like an animal for the rest of your life. And I will make sure your life is a living H-E-double hockey stick. I ain't lying. I don't even play like this. 
I love you. This is the end of my story. Listen, I know we have a generation of kids, young people, even some older, who feel like abuse is love. They run towards it. They don't like it unless it's toxic. But let me help you with something. Scoot up for a second. Abuse is not love. Being possessive is not love. Being controlling is not love. And obsession definitely is not love. Obsession is deadly and it leads to deadly consequences. It's bad enough this young lady had to use lose her baby, but she could have lost her life when they were trying to reenact the battle at the OK Corral, shooting at each other down the street. An innocent bystander could have gotten hurt. I'm glad this young lady made it out, but a whole lot of young people don't make it out of these situations because they don't understand the danger they are in when they are playing with individuals who do not see you as a person. They see you as a possession to do with however they want to, whenever they want to, why ever they want to. We do not condone violence, be it mental, be it physical, be it emotional. No one has the right privilege or authority to treat you like anything less than who you are. And that's why we say know your worth and then add tax. Thank you for joining us for another X-Files Exposed. Drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this one. We will be jumping on a live to discuss it once I'm feeling better. Do me a favor, please hit that like and subscribe button. We are on our road to 1K. We have reached our 4K watch hours. So now we just need the thousand subscribers. Thank you for every view, for every share, for every watch, for every comment, for every like, for every dislike. Thank you for your engagement. Until next time, always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Now raise those glasses, clink, and let's drink. Till we meet again. Ta-ta.